Hello everyone, it's Wednesday, 2 p.m., so that means it's time to talk Coyotes hockey. Uh, today's an off day for the Coyotes practice in New Jersey before taking on the Devils tomorrow, and this concludes this three-game Eastern road trip swing, which obviously has had some highs and lows. Uh, a low obviously being the loss of Mike Smith to an apparent right leg injury. Um, still waiting on a timeline for his return, but also a high perhaps the win last night uh, in Pittsburgh grabbing two points in regulation holding on uh, for that win um, to grab points in both games so far. So the Coyotes have the potential to grab five out of six points on this trip, which considering the travel, how compacted this trip is, I think they'll take that showing. Um, but we have lots of questions to get to today. I'm going to try and squeeze all of them in our chat. And if I don't, I will blog the rest of the answers. Uh, obviously, a lot going on right now. So this is an important time to get as much information out there so the Coyotes make their playoff push. First of all, obviously the most pressing news that everyone wants to know about right now, Ryan says, what's the latest on Smith? And then also he wants to know about Korpakowski. Well, let's start with Korpakowski. Uh, he was hit in the face earlier this week with a puck at a morning skate Monday in New York, so he hasn't played since, but um, he skated today. Look good out there, Don Maloney said. Feels good, Don Maloney said. So he anticipates that Korpakoski will be available to play tomorrow. We'll see actually how that pans out. But um, it doesn't look like anything serious with Korpakoski in return could be imminent. As for Mike Smith, where do the Coyotes stand with Mike Smith? He's still obviously on the trip with the team. Um, and we really won't know more about his status and this leg injury uh, that it looks like from replay, all the Coyotes are calling it as a lower body injury, um, until Friday. He had an MRI test Tuesday in Pittsburgh. The results have been sent back to the team's medical uh, doctors in the Valley, but really they want to get Mike Smith in front of their doctors Friday before they announce a timeline in the severity of this injury. So we expect more answers Friday. Um, obviously, the Coyotes will be back on the ice at home against Minnesota Saturday. So whether or not he plays that game is probably a little unlikely. But um, from all reports so far, Smith is in good spirits. He's moving around all right. He's really responded to the treatment that the training staff with the team has supplied him so far. So everyone's really encouraged with how he's trending. Obviously, when you saw him writhing in pain and grabbing at his right knee in the crease after he was uh, run over by Bruce Sard in that game Monday, it looked very serious and scary, but uh, the outlook has obviously improved since then. Okay, moving on to some other questions. Okay. Harold wants to know, I was surprised there was little fanfare concerning the injury to Mike Smith. I thought it looked intentional on the part of the Rangers forward. Um, you know, this is a good point, and I think we'll probably hear more about um, the injury from the perspective of someone running over a goalie once Mike Smith talks. He's obviously been very vocal about protection for net miners, um, not just himself, but seeing other goalies get injured as well. And he's very passionate about this issue. And I think that'll probably be the side of the story that's more brought to life once Smith is made available to talk. Because, you know, like Harold mentioned, Broussard was kind of right on top of him in that crease. And you really kind of wonder what point he had doing there, why he was allowed to be there. Obviously, it's up to the Coyotes defensemen maybe to push him out. But it really seemed un unnecessary that there wasn't, you know, no penalty called. He was right on top of Smith, fell on top of him, and there's no call. And serious injury resulted as, you know, as a result of that. So um, it is a point, I think, that has been overshadowed just by the injury to Smith, his importance to the Coyotes at this time of the season, that maybe, you know, the attention has kind of turned away from, what was that player doing there and why was there no you know, penalty called? Is this how goaltenders are going to be treated moving forward or does there need to be a little bit more protection for the netminders? Okay, moving on. Next question. Evervale, do you think that fans management, whomever, whomever put too much pressure on Ribeiro or Erat to be, that thing has been missing, and maybe that mentality had caused the lack of cohesive teamwork this season? Um, you know, it's tough to say with how Ribeiro and Erat are settling into this group. Obviously, first year for Erat, first year for Ribeiro, although Ribeiro has been here longer. Um, it, you know, I think we saw that Erat hands over line broken up last night, and and 
I think just right now there's no time to experiment and get or there's sorry there is time to experiment there's no time to just wait for these experiments to pan out they need instant chemistry they need pairs and trios that work and they're gonna tinker until they find something and this was something that Dave Tippett said was a possibility if it didn't look like ERAT was gonna work with Hansel and Verbata, he had no problem moving him elsewhere and that was something that Don Maloney the general manager hinted to as well when they required ERAT was his versatility to move throughout the lineup. So I think it'll take just a little bit more time with, with ERAT. You have to remember he's still coming off of injury, so that also limited his time to fit into this lineup. As for Ribeiro, I think it's been tough to find wingers to compliment him. I think he has a very particular skill set that he likes in his wingers. Someone who may be kind of more similar to Brandon McMillan, which we've seen be successful so far with Ribeiro in spurts. Um, someone who can go along the boards, be hard, dig pucks out, um, and feed Ribeiro. Then on the flip side, he needs someone to finish off those plays. And I think it's been tough to find wingers who, like maybe a Redeem Verbata, are, are the trigger man. They're the guy that's going to finish the play, um, you know, rather than set it up. So maybe that's an off-season priority for the Coyotes is finding wingers to complement Ribeiro because it does look like it has been tough for him to find surefire chemistry with a lot of players this season. Okay, moving on. Uh, another question from Evervale, uh, what is your impression, if any, on Byzantine? His numbers aren't impressive, but there could be many reasons for that. Uh, obviously, he made sense as the emergency call-up for, um, you know, for, to back up Grace during Smith's absence right now. Um, you know, I think he is probably the closest out of those cluster of goalies right now in Portland to be NHL ready. Um, but I think he's just kind of struggled to find the consistency. This is the most minutes that Byzantine has played in his career to date and what he's and what he's been as a number one in Portland. Um, so I think it's just getting used to that workload. I know a lot of, of manager types really favor seasoning their goalies in the minors. There's almost, you know, like a hundred game mark that they have to get to before they think, okay, we'll, tr we'll test you out. We think you're ready. And I just don't think Byzantine has been at that point yet. But being here right now with the Coyotes isn't a bad thing either. I think this is probably a good time for him to soak up this experience, soak up this NHL uh, caliber of play, be around it in a playoff push, and, um, you know, come back. Um, you know, at training camp in the summer and just, you know, trying to build off that experience. Okay, next question. Weston wants to know, what is your take on the Ribeiro scratch last night? I know that we got the two points, which is the most important thing, but still, I was pretty shocked when I saw Ribs on the scratch list. Do you think Tip was trying to send a message? Thanks. Uh, I, I think it is sending a message. Um, in the fact that they expect more from Ribeiro. And, and Maloney echoed those statements today. Uh, he said that this is a coach's decision of who to play, um, but they weren't happy with the performance of some veterans. Derek Morris, Morris was also the other one who was, who was a scratch last night, and obviously the Coyotes got the results they want, so it makes you wonder if they're going to stick with um, a lineup similar to last night. Maloney also said, calling up Connor Murphy, that Murphy's going to play tomorrow night. So I'll, we'll probably see a little bit of change, too. But it's interesting. I think also, though, maybe more important than sending a message is um, the Coyotes need points, and they need players in the lineup who are willing to work toward getting points. And I just don't think they've seen enough from Ribeiro, um, enough engagement, enough create, you know, creating plays, uh, turning in shifts that are meaningful, that push the game along, that help toward you know, getting a goal, preventing a goal. I just don't think they've seen that. Derek Morris was a minus three in that Monday New York game. So, you know, it makes sense to try and tinker right now because, like I said, with the ERAC combination getting broken up, you just have – they're just at this point where it's a struggle to find something that works consistently, and they're trying to experiment and trying to, you know, figure out something that works. Do I think Rivera will be a healthy scratch again tomorrow? I don't know. I think he probably does get back in. Um, but, you know, this is kind of a chip on someone's shoulder now. No one likes to be healthy scratch, especially at this established point of their careers. Um, so we'll see how they respond. Maybe this is kind of the kick in the pants that he needed to, to get going in a direction that the team feels he's more helpful. Okay, next up. Donor fan. Seems like the Czech players are always injured. Hansel missed 13 games due to injury so far. Erat was out. Z gets a pass because of the shot blocking stud. Our tip and general manager Don Maloney concerned at all about this pattern. Hemsky does not seem to follow the Czech injury pattern, so hopefully we can sign him in the summer. Um, 
I, I, I mean, I, I, I think that's probably too much of a generalization of, of narrowing it down to a nationality on this team that gets injured. It's concerning for sure, especially you look at Hansel and his big stature. You would think that he maybe be able to withstand more. But I, I think they're concerned when anyone gets injured and it's just those, what's the quickest we can get them back in the lineup. Um, every player's different. You know, everyone has a different body, a different timeline, a different way of recovering. So I think it's just more important on getting them back in the lineup rather than wondering why, you know, the conspiracy theories come out of why it's this player from this country that's getting injured. Uh, David wants to know, uh, Hi Sarah, the playoff pushes on and with Smith having played some of his best hockey as of late, out for an extended period of time is now on Grice's shoulders. He's been solid enough this season. Do you get a sense from the players and coaches that they still have a good chance of making the playoffs with him in net? I, I just sense from my point of view that they do. I don't think Grice has shown anything so far this season that would discredit him from being able to carry this workload. Maybe simply the fact that he hasn't played this much and that he could play an extended, you know, consecutive amount of games right now. Um, talking to Don Maloney this morning, um, you know, he reiterated this is the opportunity for Grice that he wanted. Maloney actually approached Grice's agent during the Olympic break to talk about a contract extension. That's how much they liked what they've seen so far. He actually revealed too that they tried to sign him three years ago as a backup. So he's been a guy that they've wanted. They like what they've seen so far. They're trying to, you know, lock him in as this number two moving forward for Mike Smith. Um, but now is the opportunity for him to show that he's legit for that, that he deserves that. And it's validation for him. He wanted an opportunity. Now he has it. And, you know, I think this is a good kind of a win-win for the Coyotes because uh, if Grice wins, it helps them out. It reaffirms their interest in him. And it helps Grice out, too, because it shows that he can handle more of a workload, he can handle more pressure, and he probably has more of the makings of a number one. So you have this personal ambition and this team ambition both going in the same direction. And I think this could be a very advantageous situation. I think you look at the Pittsburgh game, and it was more indicative of the style that the Coyotes want to play. And I think having a different net miner in there maybe forced the Coyotes to tighten up play a little better defensively, and we see the results that happen. So I do believe that he could be the one to kind of weather the storm here until Smith gets back and ready. Okay, another question from David. Uh, the hardest working player poll is up on the Coyotes website. Is there one player that you could pick as the MVP of the Coyotes season so far? Who would it be and why? Um, this is interesting because lately I've really regarded Mike Smith, obviously, before this injury as the team's catalyst. And uh, I'm not sure if I've said it on this chat before, but I have said it recently that if I've been looking looking for a reason to write off the Coyotes, I haven't been able to find one because Mike Smith has been the anchor that he has every night. As long as Mike Smith is on his game and gives the Coyotes a chance to win every night, I feel that they have a legit chance to make the playoffs. Having said that, looking at the entire scope of the season, I would probably have to say Antoine Vermette has been the MVP for me. Uh, because his game is so multilateral, he touches so many facets of this team's game in important areas. Goal scoring leaves the team in that department with 24 power play, penalty kill, and his goals just seem to be important ones. They come at important times. You remember that hat trick that he had in Ottawa, scoring an overtime winning goal, that performance he had uh, in Vancouver earlier this season on the road. He just scores at valuable times, all the while being a block, you know, a shot blocker, a face-off stud, uh, someone to work all aspects of the game, power play, penalty kill, five on five. To me, I think you need those players, and I think they've seen the value in their system of having such a versatile center as Vermette. Okay, we're going to answer a few more questions here. I think I'm going to probably have to file a blog on the remaining questions because we had a lot of participation today, which is great. Uh, Brian wants to know, who do you think the Coyotes go after in the offseason? Um, you know, I think it's really going to have to start to see who they want to keep from this team, um, you know, to see maybe what pieces they have to fill. I think the defense will probably get a little bit of a makeover, so maybe that's a piece that they acquire in the offseason, look to add, maybe another veteran presence, because I do think they're probably going to trend a little bit young on the blue line next season and give more opportunity to the likes of Connor Murphy and Chris Summers and Michael Stone. Up front, um, I think this team is pretty settled up the middle now with the likes of um, Hansel, Ribeiro, Vermette all under contract for next season. I think filling that four-plane center role will be fairly easy. It could be someone in-house like Kyle Chipchura, but there's always those veteran four-plane versatile centers that are available out there. Um, I think it's probably going to be the wings, and maybe, like I said, it's finding someone to complement Ryan Ribeiro. 
We'll see if Redeem Verbata is back. Maybe they're going to have to fill that second line, you know, wing, right winger void. Um, yeah, I think they're pretty, pretty, you know, stacked on, you know, the left side. They have lots of options, but, um, you know, maybe it's finding someone else to add a little bit of depth behind or ahead of the likes of Shane Doe and Rudy Rabat if he stays back. Uh, someone mentioned Alice Hemsky. I think that's someone who could be a good fit. Uh, maybe he's the one to complement this check line if all the pieces remain intact. Um, you know, but it's still kind of too early, I think, to tell because I really think you have to see how this current group phases out whether or not they make the playoffs, how they do, um, before you try and kind of fill the holes and then try and get better. Okay, moving on to the next question. Uh, Summers, uh, Chris Nasty has a question about Summers. He's looked very good. Um, and he's been trusted in key situations like the penalty kill. It seems like it'd be tough for Slumko to draw back in with how well he's been playing. Summers has come in very much, you know, as advertised, I think, as the player we expect him to be all along. And it's good for him because I think that's one of those feel-good stories. He's really toughed it out for a long time, uh, you know, trying to get this opportunity. And now that he has it, he's really taking advantage. Part of the reason why Connor Murphy was recalled today was because they want to shift Chris Summers back to that left side. Uh, he was playing on the right with Brandon Gormley, and they just feel he's a little bit better on his natural left side. So it'll be interesting to see now that he's maybe more in his comfort zone how he fares. But... Penalty kill, shot blocker. He really is kind of of that mold that the Coyotes have been missing this year. A shut down, roll type defenseman. And good for him that he's finally settling in and, you know, delivering. It might be tough for Slumko to move back in the lineup, but still there doesn't seem to be any positive progress on him in his foot injury from that shot block. So that'll be something to also monitor as well. Okay, last question here, since I've been talking for probably too long. You're probably getting sick of my voice. Um, let's find a good one. Okay. Evervale. This is a good point because it's a timely question. What has changed that has caused the power play to click this year, even when Rivero isn't on the ice or playing? As we saw last night, that Rivero was effective, or the power play was effective without Rivero. I really think, obviously, Newell Brown has come in and provided a strategy that has been very advantageous to this group and this personnel. Personnel, particularly blame the blue line, and I think that's what makes this power play click is is the the movement and the shot quality that they see from Keith Yandel and Oliver Ekman Larson. They have become the quintessential power play quarterbacks, and their ability to direct it to funnel passes, you know, to the wings fire shots up the middle of the ice I think has been really key for the Coyotes and I think it's just provided stability in their plan of attack. They know that they're going to move it, they know that they're going to look for those shots, look for those passes and I think having that success rate with, with, with them being able to do their job has really enabled other players to get, you know, get in front, act as screens, tip shots, you know, bury rebounds. Um, I really think it starts with the blue line and it really has been a coming of coming of age type year I think for Yandel in that regard and Oliver Ekman Larson you look at their as power play assists and just their point totals overall they really have the confidence to move the puck back there and I think that trickle down effect has really helped. Um, thank you so much for participating we had a lot of questions today and I'm, I am going to post a blog later up on AZ Central Sports to finish answering the rest of the questions because I'm sure they're of great quality like the ones we discussed today. Uh, I'll be back next week uh, same time the should be a game day. We'll be, uh, I think I'll be in LA for the Coyotes to take on the Kings. Um, so lots to talk about then. Thank you for the participation today and we will see you next time.